In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how easy it is to convert your straight air conditioner to a heat pump, and you can still utilize your gas furnace as backup heat. We're gonna show you exactly how to do it step by step. So let's get right into it. All right, so since our condenser is still operating totally fine, we're going to utilize the compressor to pump all of the refrigerant into this unit, and we're gonna lock it into this unit, and then we can remove it from the building. Now, if your system is not running and you wanna replace it, um, you can take a couple of measures, maybe put a hard star kit on it to get the compressor to work, just enough to pump the refrigerant in, or you'll have to reclaim that refrigerant use a recovery machine to put it into a tank. So those are the, the two options, but we're gonna opt to use the compressor to pump everything in here. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our unit here temporarily. Now, once we have our gauges hooked up to this, we're gonna put the disconnect back in. We're gonna show you the whole procedure on how to pump it into the system. And once that refrigerant is locked in, then we're gonna go ahead and pull this disconnect back out. All right, so our panel is off. We're gonna go ahead and hook up our gauges. So we're gonna hook up the high side here. I love these low loss fittings. Um, if you wanna find these, you can check them out on our Amazon store. You can get the hoses that have the low loss fittings uh, pre-built into the hoses. And these are definitely the ones that I prefer. Okay, so now that these are connected, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove both of these king valve caps, these little brass caps here. So the purpose of these valves is the refrigerant is all contained into this unit. And when we do the initial install, we open these two and it allows all that refrigerant to flow into the rest of the system. So now what we're doing is basically the reverse of that. We're going to use these two valves to isolate all of the refrigerant and lock it into the condenser. So to start with, what we're gonna do is we're going to completely uh, close the high side. So this 3 8 one. So what we're using here is a specialty HVAC tool. This can also be found on our Amazon store, but it's just a ratcheting Allen head uh, tool. So we're just gonna ratchet the high side all the way down. So now that this is closed, I just wanna emphasize what we're doing here. So the compressor, what it's doing is it's pushing refrigerant out this way and it's sucking that refrigerant in through the larger suction side. And so in capping this off or closing this valve, what we're doing is preventing any of that refrigerant from getting pushed out. It's gonna stack inside the condenser and once our gauge reads zero at the suction side, we're gonna lock all of that refrigerant into this unit. So we're gonna go ahead and put this tool on the suction side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this off completely and then we're gonna back it off about maybe five turns. Okay, so this is locked. We're just gonna back it off maybe a handful of times. And we're just gonna leave our tool in here. And what that's gonna do is once this uh, refrigerant is pushed into the condenser, we wanna avoid running the compressor for super long. So this is gonna allow us to quickly close this off and completely lock all that refrigerant into the unit. Okay, so since our thermostat is still calling for cooling, um, there's two methods that we can manually turn this system on and off. And this is probably the preferred method. As long as your thermostat is calling for cooling, we're going to plug this disconnect in. And then over here, we're going to be watching our gauges and what we're going to be looking for is for the low side to be showing zero PSI. We might actually even go a little bit past zero and then we'll go ahead and close this valve which will completely lock everything in here. Now the other thing we can do, if we have the disconnect plugged in but the thermostat is not calling for cooling, uh, what you can do is you can push in this little contactor and that will manually turn on the system and then you can just let go of that contactor when the refrigerant is all pushed into the condenser. So I'm gonna do the first method. I'm going to plug this in and then we're just gonna watch this gauge uh, drop. And once it gets to zero, we're gonna lock that refrigerant in. So here we go. All 
right, so we can see our pressure is dropping. All right, so we're at zero PSI. We're gonna go ahead and lock this down. As soon as we're done, we're gonna go ahead and pull the disconnect. And it is as easy as that. So as you can see, we're in a little bit of a vacuum here, um, which is totally fine, but everything is contained to our condenser. So we're good to go ahead and cut our refrigerant lines, disconnect our electrical, and we can go ahead and pull this unit away from the home. Okay, so our disconnect is pulled, but we're gonna go ahead and just confirm that we don't have any power. So at the contactor here, we're just gonna go across these two lugs here. Got zero. We're gonna go from ground to each lug also. Zero and zero. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just disconnect these two wires and our ground and then we'll remove our conduit and cut our lines and we can get this unit pulled off okay so our units uh disconnected for the most part we just have the thermostat wire left now i want to mention this before i cut this um something to note if you're converting your system to a heat pump is you want to see if you have extra wires because you will need extra wires for your reversing valve that reversing valve tells your system when to go into heating mode instead of cooling. Now for my system, as you can see, I have five wires, so we're golden, but otherwise we would have to install some new wiring to the condenser if you only have two wires. So make note of that if you're upgrading your system to a heat pump. All right, so we're down here at the furnace. Uh, this is the coil that we're gonna be removing. It's a Goodman 14 inch width coil. Uh, just a standard 13 sear piston so we're gonna have terry here remove all of this um, exhaust venting we're gonna remove this slide the coil out we're good to cut our lines in the future i'm going to be doing a video on replacing this whole transition um, this one is a little bit ghetto it it flows just fine but i want to redo all of the duct work with flex duct that's insulated and just redo this whole transition all together. But we're not gonna do that in this video. We're just gonna be replacing the coil. And a couple of people have mentioned this is not correct. We're gonna replace this with just a piece of flex um, exhaust venting there. So let's go ahead and get all of this removed and we'll come back when we just have our case here and we'll show you what, it, what that looks like. All right, so here's our new ACIQ coil. As you can see, you've got the TXV. It has a multi-directional TXV. So this can be used in heating and cooling. And our bulb is already attached, which is also really cool. So unlike the Ream or Rude systems, we don't have to attach that. And it's about six inches from here. So if you're brazing, you definitely need some putty or rag here. Uh, but with Stay Bright 8, we should be totally fine. Um, the TXV is also close to this one. So Stay Bright 8 is gonna be a good option for this um, so this is pretty much the exact same dimensions of our old coil so it should be a really easy replacement uh, we'll just pull the old one out and slide the new one in so before we install this coil um, i have been trying to make it a habit of removing this before it's installed that way if there's any damages during shipping you'll be aware of them so we're going to go ahead and pull this plug and we should have a little bit of pressure come out there we go. So we just confirmed that there's no leaks in this coil. So we're gonna just throw this back in so we don't get any contaminants in there until we get this installed. So this is our ACIQ two ton hyperheat condenser. So this is a heat pump. It will run in air conditioning as well as heat mode. And I wanted to show you what all is included uh, with this kit. Being as it's going to be combined, with my existing furnace and a coil. So I wanna show you what the connections here look like. So these go from the flare fitting to a three quarter regular uh, swage fitting. This is what you would see on a regular split system. So we can attach these 
and then we'll just make our connections here and it'll be super easy. And these are specialty pieces so you can bend these without worrying about kinking them and that's also a huge advantage. So we're gonna go ahead and get our condenser moved over to its location and then we're gonna start pumping down the system. All right, so Terry got our coil out. So this is our old coil. As you can see, it just has two rows and I'll show you the bottom side. So now that we got that new filter rack in, man, there's zero buildup inside. Love to see that. So just for reference, you can see this new coil is an N coil. So we've got one coil here, one going down that way, and then another coming up this way. So we have a ton more surface area, but really the same space is being utilized. All right, so we've got the new box in. Everything fits really nice. So we're just gonna tape. We have access to the back and all sides. So we're just gonna run a layer of tape on the bottom side and on the top. We're gonna attach it back how it was. And then again, later on, we're gonna replace this whole thing here. So we'll go ahead and get it sealed, slide our coil in, and then we can make our connections. All right, guys and gals, here's our new ACIQ condensing unit. We have our two fittings that are going to work out really nicely here. Um, I did confirm that a filter dryer is not needed on this and it is not recommended. Um, I confirmed that with HVAC Direct. So that's where our two fittings are going to go and then we'll re-insulate that line there. All right, so we got our lines fitted here. This is our going to be our finished product. So I hate to say this, but we're not going to be able to use Stay Bright 8 because this fitting that comes with the ACIQ is not a snug fit. As you can see, there's just way too big a gap for Stay Bright 8. Um, in order for Stay Bright 8 to work, it has to be like, like this gap, like snug against the pipe. Um, when it's like this, Stay Bright 8 just will not work. So we're gonna get out our stuff to do our brazing for this unit and uh, we're just gonna braze this up real quick. We're gonna run our nitrogen uh, flow inside of this so we're not gonna have any soot buildup on the inside of this line. But that's one advantage to Stay Right 8 is you don't have to do that. All right, so the kit that, uh, this ACIQ kit came with this fitting, which is really nice. It has the Schrader core and the core depressor. So if you were to thread this on, it would depress this valve stem and then it would seal until you attached your hose as long as your hose has a depressor on it. But being as I do this for a living, um, I'm gonna be installing this Schrader core removal tool. So before we install that, we're just gonna go ahead and remove this core. So we've got our core removed. We're just gonna set it up here. And now what we're gonna do is install the Schrader core tool on the low side here. And then we can hook up our nitrogen and we can do our nitrogen flow. All right, so we have our Schrader core removal tool here. We've got our blue hose hooked up. That goes to our manifold set. And then our yellow hose is just going up here to our nitrogen. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. Now, normally I would have a regulator right here and that regulator has two settings, one for brazing and then one for purging, but I can't find that little regulator. So all we want while we're brazing is just a little nitrogen presence. So we're just gonna barely crank this line right here to where we've got like hardly any nitrogen flowing through that line. All we need is presence and that will create soot from building up here. So we're gonna go ahead and braze this. Then we're going to move this over to this one since we don't have our connections made inside yet. And then we'll braze this bottom one. And we're gonna be using the Gentech torch. This is the super compact torch that I did a video on. I absolutely love this thing. It is so compact, so lightweight, easy to maneuver. And uh, these hoses are real uh, lightweight as well. All right, so one thing that I like to do when I'm brazing is I like to go ahead and crack, especially when you're in someone's home. So let's say we just crack the acetylene. Once you light this, you notice how much soot it gives off. So what I like to do is, especially if I'm in someone's home, is I'll just crack the oxygen just ever so slightly. And as you can see, it doesn't give off that soot. Then you can regulate it to what you want.
right, so our brazing is done. We're just gonna let this cool naturally and then we're gonna clean it off and show you what the finished product looks like. All right, so our lines are finished up here. As you can see, everything is really good. It's kind of dark because I decided to put my awning out to give me some shade here. Um, but these joints look really good. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to loosen these and we're gonna use our nylog blue on the flare part of this. We're not gonna put it on the threads, just on the flared part on both of these. And then we can tighten these to spec. All right, so we're just gonna put some nylog on the outside of this. It doesn't take much. And as you can see, this is good for all refrigerants. So you don't have to worry about this contaminating anything. So we're gonna slide this unit over to the left where we need it and fasten these down. All right, so we just got these tightened uh, per the install guide. This one needs to be 25 foot pounds for the 3 8 line and then 70 to 80 foot pounds on this larger line. So you really have to crank on that one for sure. So now that this is done, we're going to go ahead and hook up our electrical. Now, since our electrical was already here, this part's gonna be really easy. We're just gonna go straight into here and then our communication wire will go into that guy. We already have a three quarter liquid type fitting here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna feed this in and then we're gonna attach the nut on the back side. If you had a half inch conduit, you could use some of those washers to adapt it to a three quarter. Uh, but this worked out really nice since I already have a three quarter one here. So you'll notice that my wiring is black and white. And I've learned um, since starting the channel that if you have a white wire, you really need to wrap this with red tape. So we're going to wrap this with red tape just to signify that this is one of our hot legs and not a neutral. So our red, once we have this tape put on, is gonna go to red up here to L1. Our black is going to go to L2, and then our ground will just go right there to the ground. Now, if you notice over here, that's where all of our signal wires are. So in order for this system to run properly, we need a minimum of five communication wires. And luckily, our communication wires have five, so we're golden on that. So we'll need to wire it in here and then change it at our furnace as well as at our thermostat. All right, so our box is in place. Not super pretty up here, but everything is sealed um, and everything's sealed on the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and take our coil and slide it in. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so our coil is fitted. We're gonna go ahead and throw the cover on and then we should be good to uh, do our brazing. We're gonna be using some heat putty here to make sure that we don't overheat the TXV or this bulb. All right, so we've got our nitrogen flowing through the high side and we've got this open so it'll flow back out through this side once we have our connections inside. And we'll go ahead and bring our brazing stuff downstairs. All right, so we've got our PVC connections made. I love that everything is away from the exhaust now before they were right in the way of this. So this works out really nicely. Um, so this is our main drain and then we have our safety trap here. If this overflows for whatever reason, this will pop up and it will turn the system off. So we're gonna go ahead and scotch bright these fittings. We've got our nitrogen flow going here, as you can see, and then uh, we'll get these brazed up. So we got all our fittings uh, made up here. We're gonna be using this heat block. This stuff can get a little bit messy because it wants to stick to everything, but it's definitely worth uh, doing. It's not gonna hurt anything if you've got some remnants on here, but we wanna make sure we get all around that pipe leave ourselves some room to uh to do the same thing on the high or the low side and this can be reused which is really nice so again we're going to crack the oxygen first then the acetylene
All right, so now that we're just letting those uh, lines cool off on the inside, we're gonna go ahead and do our pressure test. So we're gonna close. This is where our nitrogen was coming back to escape. So we have our nitrogen all set up. We're just going to go ahead and feed in about 50 PSI. And we're gonna let it sit for a few seconds. If there's a large leak, you will be able to tell with 50 PSI, it'll drop, drop pretty rapidly. And then once we let this uh, set for a little bit, um, then we'll go ahead and put our 300 PSI of nitrogen in. So I manually checked all of these with a mirror. Everything looks really good. And I feel really good about the ones on the inside. So we'll just give this about five minutes and then we'll feed in 300 PSI. All right, so we've settled at 51.5. There's no leaks so far. So we're gonna go ahead and feed in 300 PSI. I believe I'm almost out of nitrogen. So we might just be doing a 200 PSI test here. All right, so we've stabilized at 173. That's literally all the uh, the nitrogen that we had in the tank. So I'm gonna have to get some more of that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start our tightness test. So we're gonna click and hold tightness test, press enter to start. And that's gonna give us a countdown. We're gonna do this for about 10 minutes. And as long as our pressure differential stays um, at zero, it doesn't go into the negative then we are golden and we're good to proceed. So we'll give it 10 minutes and we'll come back. All right, so we're doing our pressure test. All of our lines turned out super nice. Uh, we're gonna obviously re-insulate this. I'll probably go back even further here. Our drain is completely done, safety switch. So we're gonna do our exhaust venting and then our vacuum and then we should be ready to send the refrigerant through the system. And the last thing will be our communication wiring. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes. Our pressure differential is still above negative. So our pressure test was successful. I also went through on all these flares and sprayed everything down with leak detector and I found zero bubbles at all. So we're good to go there. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, let all the pressure off of the system. And what I like to do is to just purge everything if there's any sort of contaminants. All right, so now that the pressure is off of the system, we're gonna hook up our True Blue kit to our NAVAC 4CFM battery powered pump. And we're gonna hook up the Micron gauge with our ball valve on the high side right here. And that way we can measure how quickly our system is pulling down, make sure that we have uh, below 500 microns. All right, so we've got everything hooked up here. We're gonna go ahead and power on our pump. This is the 4CFM battery powered pump. This will run for 60 minutes on one battery charge. And uh, I can typically pull a system down in about 10 minutes to below 500 microns. So we can run uh, on one charge, we can pump down six systems at most, which is pretty amazing. Uh, this kit comes with two batteries so I can have another one fully charged at all times. And as you can see, it has a slow start. It's uh, very quiet, very compact. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. All right, so we're at 270 microns. We're gonna go ahead and isolate. It's been about 15 minutes. I'm gonna shut this down. And as long as we don't rise above 500 microns within five minutes, then we should be good to go. All right, so it's been about 10 to 15 minutes. We're still well below uh, 500 on our micron gauge. So we're gonna go ahead and isolate our micron gauge. And now we're gonna just go ahead and take our tool. So we're gonna open the suction side up. same on the liquid side. All right, so now our refrigerant process is completely done. We're just gonna snug these caps up and then we're gonna go ahead and put our Schrader core in. All right, so to put our core back in is quite easy. All we're gonna do is we're gonna feed this into the tool. Then we're gonna slide this uh, piece over, crank that one down. 
Now, as soon as we open this, we'll see the pressure push this uh, thing out, just like that. So we're gonna use one hand to hold it in, and then we're just gonna start threading it. And you'll notice that this is getting closer to this, so it's threading like it's supposed to. And there you go. That's the resistance you want. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this. We're gonna take this piece off slowly. And we're gonna verify that our Schrader core is working by slowly opening this one. Beautiful. So now we can take our Schrader core tool off and it's as easy as that. So we're gonna move on now to our communication wires and then we should be ready to fire the system up. All right, so moving on to our communication wires, we have a strain relief connector right here. And all this does is when you crimp this down, there's a little plastic thing that squeezes around this and keeps anything from getting inside of this unit and keeps it watertight. All right, so we have five wires for our communication wire um, that are coming in from the furnace. And as you can see here at the unit, this top row is S1, S2, B, W, and D. Now W, D, and L down here, uh, this bottom row is R, C, Y1, Y2, and L. We're not gonna use W, D, or L. So we're going to have Y1, Y2, C, R, and B right here in the middle is for our reversing valve. So we're going to hook red to R, we're gonna hook blue to C. We're gonna hook yellow to Y1, green to Y2, and white to B. Now you can wire this differently as long as it matches on the indoor unit, that's all that matters. All right, so as you can see, we've got white going to B, uh, red to R, blue to C, yellow to Y1, and green to Y2. So this is completely done. We're going to go ahead and slap this panel back on. All right, so now that we're done out at the condenser with the wiring and everything, we need to get more wiring from the furnace to the thermostat. In order to make this work, we need to have an OB wire that needs to tell our reversing valve to turn on. And we also need a W1 to signal when the heat should come on. Now there's two options here. We can either fish a new wire through this wall to wherever your furnace is. Some situations are different than others. That might be feasible. But for my situation, I'm opting to install an add -a wire kit called the FastStat 5000. So we're gonna walk you through how to get additional wires from here to your furnace without having to run additional wiring here. So the way this works is we have a sending unit and it's very compact specifically so that you can put this in behind the thermostat and you'll utilize these wires. Now it just takes the 24 volts from one of these wires, probably the red wire, and it communicates with this unit at the furnace. So to begin with, we're gonna show you how to install this indoor unit. And basically it's pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to take these wires and push them aside and we're gonna stuff this into the wall and then we're gonna bend this to make sure that this doesn't fall down into the wall because that would not be good. <laughs> so first of all, we'll, we'll get our wiring pushed over and get this fished in. All right, so we got that fed inside the wall and we have our wires hanging out here and we've got a lot of flexibility so we can move these in as needed. All right, so as you can see in our diagram, black is our common. So we're gonna go from the sender to the C terminal for black. Red from the sender is going to go to R, white to W1, blue to W2, green to G, yellow to Y. Then red is going to go and utilize the existing thermostat wire and it's gonna go to the indoor, uh, to this unit, as well as purple will go to purple. All right, so here's what we got so far. From the Bluetooth sending unit, we have black going to C, white going to W1, yellow to Y1, green to G, red to RC. Now we're gonna reuse the Y2 
This goes directly to the outdoor unit. So it's just spliced at the furnace. We'll show you that in just a minute. It just goes directly from here all the way to the outdoor unit. And the thermostat controls Y1 and Y2. So Y1 goes to the furnace board itself. Y2 goes straight to the outdoor unit. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect our other red wire. There's two red wires that come from the sender. They don't matter which goes to which. We're gonna connect this one to the 24 volt supply from the furnace. And we're gonna utilize a uh, Wago lever nut. If you haven't seen these, you can find them on our Amazon store, but they're amazing and they replace wire nuts basically. So you just open up one of these tabs, you slide the wire in until it's touching on the backside, clip it in, and it will lock into place and you can tug and tug on this and it will not come apart. Then you do the same with the other one, slide it in, lock it, and that's it. So we can now tuck this into the wall. Now at the sender, purple needs to use one of the existing wires to communicate with the purple on the other end. So we're gonna go with the closest option here. I'm gonna attach it to blue. And then our thermostat wire at the, therm at the furnace, we're gonna connect blue back to purple. All right, so purple is going to blue. That's why I nutted in here. So at the furnace or at the main um, fast at 5,000, we're gonna go blue to purple. Uh, red is going to red, so we'll match that over on the other side. Now you'll notice we have two spare wires plus this extra blue wire for the fast at 5,000. Now we only need our reversing valve left. So the way this works is in heating mode, OB will be energized and this will still utilize Y1 and Y2 to communicate with the outdoor unit, but we're going to have this activated. So it's actually gonna be um, stage one and stage two of heating. So the reversing valve reverses the cycle and allows you to get heating. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this green wire, the existing thermostat wire for our OB terminal for our reversing valve and we'll make sure and match that all the way out to the unit. We're gonna just use this green wire. The biggest thing with this is you just need to make sure you match the colors um, and that's all that matters. Typically green is not used for that, but that's what we have. And as long as it matches, it will work great. All right, so now we've got two wires that are unused. We can utilize those later if we wish. So our wiring here is completely done. We can go ahead and bump this back on. Our power is shut off at the furnace, so nothing's gonna come on here until we have our wiring done down there at the furnace. All right, so as you can see, this furnace board is set up for single stage cooling, single stage heating. So uh, this particular installation is going to be for utilizing a single stage heating and cooling furnace board, but with an Ecobee smart thermostat to control the two stage cooling as well as two stage heating heat pump. So this can be done and we're gonna show you how to do it. I just wanted to point out something real quick uh, before we start. So I have two safety features on this AC system. So my condensate pump has a safety switch right here. And this safety switch also has uh, two safety wires here. So what I'm utilizing is just some thermostat wiring. So I'm breaking red and you'll notice right here at the board, that's the reason why we have a blue wire going to red but just in case you're wondering. So these are the wires coming from the condenser. These are the wires coming from my thermostat. And these are the wires from my FASTAT 5000. Now it just has an adhesive so you can stick it to any clean metal part of the board. So we already have red tied into our R. So it's getting power to this red wire. And the secondary red wire here is going to attach to our red from the thermostat. Okay, so next we're gonna do our purple wire. And if you remember, our purple went to blue at the thermostat, so we'll make those connections. Next, black from the FASTAT 5000 will go to the C terminal on the control board. Green will go to G, yellow will go to Y, white will go to W, and that will leave us with blue and orange. Okay, so orange and blue, um, there's actually not even an orange wire on any of the schematics, so. I'm gonna leave orange and then blue was just blank at the thermostat. So we're just gonna clip these and leave them hanging. So out here at the condensing unit, I just wanted to confirm red is going to R, blue is going to C, 
yellow to Y1 and green to Y2. And lastly, for our reversing valve, that will be the white wire that goes to B. Okay, so from the thermostat, remember our green wire went to the reversing valve. So green is going to attach to our white because white is the wire that we used outside for the B terminal. That's for the reversing valve to signal the heating mode to come on instead of cooling. So just to reiterate, um, this, since this is for the reversing valve, there's no OB terminal here on the board. We are bypassing this board altogether. This is coming straight from the thermostat to the condensing unit to signal for that reversing valve to come on and we'll go into heating mode instead of cooling mode. Okay, so from the condenser, we remember we had yellow going to Y1. So we're gonna match that there with our yellow from the FASTAT 5000 on the Y terminal. Now red from the condenser right here, instead of going straight to our R terminal on the control board, we're gonna wire nut it in with these reds because this wiring is protected by these safety switches. And if we attach it here, the condenser will not have a chance to come on even if one of these uh, safety switches is tripped. Whereas if we put it here, there's a potential for the condenser to still come on. Now, uh, second to last from the thermostat, our white wire was going to Y2. And at the condenser, our green wire is going to Y2. So we just, this is going straight from the thermostat to the condensing unit. Lastly, we have this blue wire from our condenser and that's just going to match up with our black at the common terminal. So all of our wiring is done. We're going to just make sure those terminals are all tight, put our cover back on, and we can test out the system. So right here, we're going to, we do have Y1 connected, but it's not showing. So we're gonna click modify now it says manu manually configure tap on a terminal to connect or disconnect the wire. So Y1 and G are both connected. So we're gonna highlight both of those, click next, Fahrenheit. What kind of heat pump do you have? Air to air, it's not a geothermal. How is your OB reversing? on heating. So we want the reversing valve to come on for heating mode. In cooling mode, the reversing valve is not activated. Allow the heat pump and auxiliary heat to run simultaneously? No, we do not want the gas furnace and the heat pump to ever run simultaneously. Configure the compressor minimum outdoor temperature since this is the hyperheat heat pump, we're just gonna leave this at zero degrees. And for whatever reason, if the heat pump fails, not due to temperature, then the gas heat should kick on and heat the home. What kind of heating do you have in your home? We're gonna go furnace, gas furnace. How do you want your fan to be controlled? By the thermostat. Awesome, so we have heat pump two stage, this is both heating and cooling, and auxiliary furnace, one stage, one stage gas. So beautiful, that's exactly what we want. Okay, so we're at 69 degrees. We're just going to call for a little bit of cooling, one degree. You'll notice our blue indicator will come on, fan will come on, and we are in stage one cooling. So we're gonna go out to the condenser and make sure that we're in stage one cooling. So our condensing unit is running, it's very quiet, pulling heat out of the side. Um, this is the first time you guys have probably actually seen the system running. Okay, so right here we've got our leads on C and Y1. And as you can see, we've got 26 volts. Now, when we go over to Y2, we've got zero volts there. So now we're gonna go down a couple more degrees, maybe all the way down to 65. Notice now we're up to two stage. So let's go out there and make sure that our two stage is activated. So again, at Y1 and C, we have our 26 volts still. Now we're gonna go between C and Y2. 
and as you can see we've got 26 volts so now we're in second stage cooling so the same will apply for our heating single stage and dual stage so we're going to let this run for about 10 minutes i'll show you the temperature at the vents and then we're going to put it in heating mode and make sure that our heating works all right so as you can see we've got 50 degree air coming out of our unit ralph approves don't you Oh yes, he just got groomed and he's so fluffy. Yes, he is. All right, so I've clicked this up here and I've put it into auto mode. So now you'll notice our preset comfort settings for cooling. We have it set to 72 uh, during the day and 67 degrees. So we're gonna click on the heating one here and we're gonna bump that up to just over where we're sitting at right now. So maybe 70 degrees, that should put us in stage one heating. And there we go. We saw our heating symbol come up. Our fan just came on. So let's see what we got at the condenser. So right off, I can feel a lot of cool air coming out of here. Our fan is just on a lower speed. So let's check these and make sure that this is activated for the reversing valve and stage one is activated. Okay, so between common and our B terminal for the reversing valve, we've got 26 volts. And from common to Y1, also 26 volts. Common to Y2, 4.6 volts. So it's not calling anything for Y2. So once we bump that temperature up a few degrees, we should get 26 to Y2 as well. So in stage one so far, we've got 73 degree air. This is slowly rising because that coil is probably still cold from running the AC. Um, we're going to bump the temperature up a couple more degrees to put it in stage two, and we'll see how, many, uh, how much temperature differential we have between what it's pulling in and what it's putting out. So we're gonna go up to 73 here. And now if we go back over to here, we'll see stage two. All right, so out here at the condenser between C and Y2, we've got 26 volts. So we're now in stage two and let's see what we got at the vents now. So it looks like the fan did not change as far as going into Y2, unless the system takes a minute to ramp up. Um, but let's check and see what we've got at the vents. All right, so we're still continuing to climb little by little, but we're at 83 degrees. So our heat pump is working as it should. And if for whatever reason, if the heat pump has some issues like the condensing unit outside, at that point, the gas furnace will take over and will heat with gas. Okay, so say the system is not keeping up, this will automatically tell the system to go into gas heat mode. But if for whatever reason it doesn't and there's a communication issue, we can go to auxiliary and we're gonna bump this up to 73 again. And again, we're in auxiliary heat. The heat is on. So let's see what's going on at the furnace. All right, there we go. So our gas furnace has began the ignition process. We're not gonna let this fire up because I don't want my house to smell like the first startup, but I'll just show you that it's going through its sequence. Our hot surface igniter will come on and the system will ignite. Okay, so just so everybody knows on this piece of equipment, this is a 12 year warranty on the compressor, seven year warranty on all of the other components. This is a 20 sear system, very high efficiency, extremely quiet system compared to our old condenser that we pulled out, which was a 13 sear. And as you can see, even with our 16 inch clearance minimum, we're still closer to the wall than our old condensing unit that probably came out to here. And so this is a very nice setup. You can also purchase this to where you can mount it on the wall with wall brackets very easily. Well guys, this system is fully operational in heating, cooling, and auxiliary heat mode. So if you're looking to upgrade your system with an existing gas furnace to a heat pump, I hope this gave you all the information you need to do that conversion. 
overall it wasn't that difficult probably the most challenging part was just the wiring but if you do need help with this i also have a patreon remote service membership over at patreon.com slash diy hvac guy it's fifty dollars a month it's cancelable at any time and you can use it on an as needed basis our unit's kicking on you can barely hear it um, super quiet I'm really pleased with this ACIQ hyper heat system. Now you probably noticed down at my furnace that little green box that was attached to the side. Being as we'll be getting into the heating season pretty soon, that little green box allows you to run generator power independently to your gas furnace and has saved many people in the event of an emergency. If you wanna see how easy that installation is and what it is, check out that video right here and I'm sure you'll enjoy that video as well. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later. Enjoying the heat. The new heat pump. Yeah. You and me both.